In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You're so welcome to Mass today, this Mass for the fourth Sunday of Advent in Year B. And I'm offering this Mass for all the people of our parish, as I was singing those words about uh, the desolation of Jerusalem. Goodness me, it feels a little bit like that uh, in the world at the moment. Um, there seems to be a lot of darkness, but it's uh, all the same our joy to come into the Lord's presence, to be able to uh, meet him, to listen to him, to be listened to and loved by him, to allow ourselves to be bathed in the glorious light of Christ. And that's the great joy of every Mass, but I think especially in these dark times we feel that moment uh, of need for that. And to prepare ourselves for this celebration, let us first call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. For forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. Once David had settled into his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all the enemies surrounding him. The king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I'm living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in your, in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But that very night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus the Lord speaks. Are you the man to build me a house to dwell in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be leader of my people Israel. I have been with you on all your expeditions. I have cut off all your enemies before you. I will give you fame as great as the fame of the greatest on earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel. I will plant them there, and they shall dwell in that place, and never be disturbed again nor shall the wicked continue to oppress them as they did in the days when I appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give them rest from all their enemies. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will make you a house. And when your days are ended and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. I will be a father to him and he a son to me. If he does evil, I will punish him with a rod such as men use, with strokes such as mankind gives. 
Your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me, and your throne be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your trust. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I will, I will sing, sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always. With him my covenant shall last. I will, I will sing, sing forever of your love, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to him who is able to give you the strength to live according to the good news I preach, and in which I proclaim Jesus Christ, the revelation of a mystery kept secret for endless ages, but now so clear that it must be broadcast to pagans everywhere to bring them to the obedience of faith. This is only what the scripture has predicted. And it is all part of the way the eternal God wants things to be. He alone is wisdom. Give glory therefore to him through Jesus Christ for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done to me. Hallelujah. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, O highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow, and so the child will be called Holy, and will be called a Son of God. Know this, too. Your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. One thing I think everyone will agree on is we are living in uncertain times. It's far harder to see what the future holds today than it was a year ago, and indeed than it was when I wrote this homily yesterday morning. We are a few days from the end of the Brexit transition period, but we have no idea what will come after it. The COVID pandemic makes it impossible to plan anything, even when I wrote this a few days ahead, but in fact a few hours ahead, who knows, tomorrow it may all be completely changed again, let alone weeks or months. And simmering away in the background is the knowledge that our climate is changing and we cannot really work out what impact this will have on our lives. They are uncertain times indeed. But if we look at the story of the Holy Family, we get a glimpse of real uncertainty. The angel tells Mary she has been chosen to be the mother of God's son, that he will reign on, the th reign on the throne of his ancestor David forever, and that the child will be born of the Holy Spirit. And then when she says yes to this, 
the angel leaves. These must be some of the most remarkable words in all of the scriptures. The angel left her. He has turned her world completely upside down. And then he goes. How's it all going to happen? What will Joseph say? What does it mean that he will rule on David's throne? What's to become of us? And the same is true of Joseph. How did he feel when Mary told him the news? His mind must have been flooded with uncertainty. Even after his own visit from an angel and his decision to go through with the marriage to Mary, there must have been so many unanswered questions. What should he be doing with such an important child? How will it all play out? When will he begin to rule as king? What will happen to his parents? And then there's the practical matter of how to get safely to Bethlehem, then how to get safely to Egypt when the whole country is looking for them to try and kill them. Where to live in Egypt? How to make a living there? How long will they have to stay there? When will they know whether it's safe to come back? Where to settle when they return? How to put a roof over their head and food on their table? And most important and uncertain and scary of all for both Mary and Joseph, how to keep this child safe? He is destined for such great things. His life is so important, but every child's life is just so fragile. And then as the weeks turn into the months and then into years, they must have asked themselves, when will it start? How will it start? When will he stop being an ordinary child and become a king? How will it work? What will it be like? And perhaps every day they ask themselves, will this be the day? Perhaps they dreaded the disruption of a happy, settled life. And as the years go by and Jesus turns from a child to a man and still nothing happens, they must have wondered, was the dream just a dream? Has it all gone wrong? Has God changed his mind? Have we somehow messed the whole thing up? <laughs> and we think we live in uncertainty. Perhaps the truth is that times have always been uncertain. But we've been lucky enough to live through a rare period of certainty and stability. For most of our country's history, people that live on this land, around where we are now, have lived just one or two bad harvests from starvation. And many people in the world still do. We have had the privilege of mapping and planning out our lives, and we feel the loss of that privilege severely. But as this year of uncertainty comes to a close, and another year of uncertainty begins, Perhaps we could look to the Holy Family as a model for coming to terms with a new way of living. What Mary and Joseph managed to do in the face of all these unknowns is simply to focus on the child. Not because he's their child, but because he's their saviour. If they had stopped to ask all those questions in one go, it would have been overwhelming. And so day by day, little by little, they made their lives fit into a routine of protecting and loving the child that has been entrusted to them. Everything else fits into a daily pattern of making a safe place for God at the heart of their lives. Rather than let themselves be overwhelmed by all the questions, they make a daily discipline of keeping safe the dwelling place of God. They decline to be diverted from that, panicked into worrying about incidentals. Is God, is God close to them? Yes, he is. Does he love them? Yes, he does. Does he have a role for them? Yes, he does, and they get on with it. There's no uncertainty there. And in the light of these three sure facts, God is close to them, God loves them, he has a task for them. All of the uncertainties go into the background. We don't know where the coming year will lead us, but Mary invites us into the Annunciation scene today. She beckons us in to rest a while in her presence after the angel has left her, so that we can learn from her and draw some strength from her. Already, even before the angel has left, she's making a safe place in her life where she can treasure the presence of God. And in doing so, the storms of uncertainty settle a little. As the turning of the year approaches, we are bound to think of what the future might hold, and Mary draws us to her school of calmness, of tranquility. She invites us to spend time with her son, and find in him, in him the still centre that has helped our ancestors through centuries of precarious living. Is God close to you? Yes, he is. Does he love you? Yes, he does. Does he have a task for you? Yes, he does. The times ahead may be difficult, well, they will be difficult, perhaps even very difficult for some of us. But Mary's calm and simple but unshakable focus is given to us to help us through this. So let's sit at her feet for a while.
in her presence as the angel has left and draw some strength from her strength. So let's stand together to profess our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you'd like to take a seat while I prepare the altar. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all time. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence where he came. It is by his gifts that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, the Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. So now the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Well, normally I would be telling you what's happening in the coming week, but it's very hard to know what's going to be happening in the coming week. But the plan is, um, unless anything changes, that um, um, Masses on Monday and on Tuesday and Wednesday are the same as normal. There's no Thursday morning Mass, because I have to say Mass, uh, it'll be the Christmas Mass for the De La Salle brothers uh, over in Lys. And then uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you know the Mass times uh, for those. And uh, we've got a good plan to keep everybody safe in those, and we'll do the very best that we can. It will feel a bit strange, but it will be beautiful all the same. I'm absolutely sure of that. Uh, Boxing Day is a Saturday, and there'll be Mass in the morning, but there'll be no evening Mass. There'll be no Saturday evening Mass on the Sunday, but on Boxing Day, because I think I will just be overmassed by then. So um, uh, we'll have to manage with just the three Masses we used to on the Sunday. And who knows what will happen in the week after that. Anybody could tell, anybody's guess. I do think that uh, Scripture reading is pretty given to us as a, as a word for the time, though, that... Um, in times of great uncertainty, I think Our Lady of Uncertainty really draws us in to, to draw some of her tranquility and her serenity from her. She remains serene in the face of so much uncertainty and pain and loss, the loss of her expectation of the life that she thought she was going to have. And so uh, I think she really is our patron to, uh, to try and shed on our, our lives some of her calmness and serenity. Until we meet once more then around the altar of God, may the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.